Welcome to day seven of our novena in preparation for the Feast of St. Therese. Therese says, in the evening of this life, I shall appear before you with empty hands, for I do not ask you, Lord, to count my works. All our justice is stained in your eyes. I wish then to be clothed in your own justice and to receive from your love the eternal possession of yourself. I want no other throne, no other crown, but you, my beloved. O oh, my God, will your justice alone find souls willing to immolate themselves as victims? Does not your merciful love need them too? On every side, this love is unknown, rejected. Those hearts upon whom you would lavish it turn to creatures, seeking happiness from them with their miserable affection. They do this instead of throwing themselves into your arms and of accepting your infinite love. O oh my God, is your disdained love going to remain closed up within your heart? It seems to me that if you are to find souls offering themselves as to your love, you would consume them rapidly. It seems to me too that you would be happy not to hold back the waves of infinite tenderness within you. If you look closely at the window, you will see little footprints. These represent her apostolic spirit and her perseverance in spite of her weakness. During her illness, she would take a walk in the garden in sp spite of her weak condition, offering every step for some missionary who was weary and despondent. She would tell her novices not to give in to despair in their efforts to love, to keep lifting their little foot at the bottom of the stairs, and their Heavenly Father would come and sweep them up. Therese experienced this in her own life, and try as she would, she could not overcome her oversensitivity, which was causing her and those close to her much suffering. Here are her own words. I was really unbearable because of my extreme touchiness. If I happened to cause anyone I loved some little trouble, even unwittingly, instead of forgetting about it and not crying, which made matters worse, I cried like a Magdalene. And then when I began to cheer up, I'd begin to cry again for having cried. However, the grace was given her in an instant after midnight mass at Christmas when she was 14 years old. When I got home to Les Buissonnets from midnight mass, I knew that I should find my shoes standing at the fireplace filled with presents, as I had always done since I was little. So you can see, I was still treated as a baby. He allowed Father to feel cross this year instead of spoiling me, and as I was going upstairs, I heard him saying, Therese ought to have outgrown all this sort of thing, and I hope this will be the last time. This cut me to the quick, and Celine, who knew how very sensitive I was, whispered to me, Don't come down again just yet. You'll only go and cry if you open your presence now in front of Father. But I was not the same Therese anymore. Jesus had changed me completely. I held back my tears, and trying to stop my heart from beating so fast, I ran down into the dining room. I picked up the shoes and unwrapped my presents joyfully, looking all the while as happy as a queen. Therese would later call this her Christmas miracle, and it marked a turning point in her life. 